in solution our next topic is solubility of solid in liquid we are doing solution so which solution we are taking here a solution of solid in liquid solute here is solid and solvent here is a liquid so first of all we define solubility of the solution what is the meaning of solubility in case of solid in liquid solution this means maximum amount of solute that we can dissolve in 100 grams of solvent remember in this definition i am taking 100 gram of solvent not solution and maximum amount i've written that means solution will be a saturated solution so maximum amount of solute that we can dissolve in 100 gram of solvent so that we'll get a saturated solution at a particular temperature at a particular temperature is called solubility of solid in liquid solution next topic is factors affecting the solubility of solid in a liquid first factor here is nature of solute and solvent which solute we have taken which solvent we have taken solubility depends on that in general we can say like dissolves like like dissolves like what is the meaning of like dissolves like this means the polar solutes they dissolve in polar solvents and if we have a non-polar solute that will dissolve in a non-polar solvent and if we take ionic compound like NaCl ionic compounds are polar in nature so they will easily dissolve in the water but they will not dissolve easily in the non-polar solvents like benzene ether carbon disulfide the reason for this thing is for ionic compounds we are taking the reason if we have ionic compound let's say we have NaCl so we take NaCl there are sodium ions and there are chloride ions and between the two there is a strong force of attraction strong force of attraction is there between the two but when we are adding this ionic compound in water then what will happen when this will go into the water the forces of attraction between these ions they will break and sodium and chloride ions they will separate out and we say that this is soluble in water now they will not again combine with each other the reason is around sodium ions and chloride ions water molecules are arranging and how the water molecules are arranging this positive ion will attract the negative part of water so oxygen will be towards the side of the Na and all the water molecules will surround this sodium ion like this making a shield a cover around the sodium ion and chloride ion will attract the which part of the water positive part that is the hydrogen ions like this and here also the water molecules are forming a cover a sheath around the negative ions like this and because of this this cover around these ions the two ions again they cannot combine with each other so when the bond will break for breaking of the bond the energy which is required here the for breaking of the bond that energy is a lattice energy this is energy released beta lattice energy here so when the bond is breaking the energy released is a lattice energy so first this bond should break and when these ions they dissolve in water that is when around these ions water molecules arrange like this this process is called hydration this process is hydration and this compound is soluble in water only if hydration enthalpy is more than that of lattice enthalpy if this energy is more than that of this one then only compound will be soluble in 
water so this whole thing depends on the strength of the bond and also depends on size of these ions also so then only we'll see that which compound is more soluble which compound is less soluble so this is the first thing first factor nature of solute and solvent on which the solubility of solid in liquid depends second factor now is the temperature solubility also depends on the temperature for most of compounds when we are making a solution solute is added to solvent and we are getting a solution the process is endothermic for most of the salts compounds this process is endothermic in nature like for NaCl for NaNO3 for KCl etc so if this process is endothermic according to Lee-Checlear's principle according to Lee-Checlear's principle what will happen when we increase the temperature process always goes towards endothermic side endothermic side means this solute will dissolve more in the solvent and will get a solution so can we say the solubility will increase here with increase in temperature but there are certain substances like ceric sulfate uh, then it is lithium carbonate in these cases when this dissolution is taking place the process is actually exothermic in nature so in these substances solubility decreases with increase in temperature for most of substances solubility increases with increase in temperature but for some substances solubility is decreasing with increase in temperature these are the two factors here so in case of the solid and liquid solution we have done the definition and the two factors responsible for the solubility we have covered up now we are doing the next type of the solution that is solutions of gases in liquids so when we are adding a gas in a liquid what is the definition of solubility here the solubility definition changes according to the type of the solution so in case of gas in liquid it is a maximum volume because we're talking about gases and liquids here so we'll talk about the volume maximum volume of gas and volume we take in the cc in the cubic centimeter which can dissolve in see what i'm writing here is in one cc of liquid not 100 it is one cc of liquid two forms since it is maximum volume so two forms saturated solution at that temperature so when we are defining solubility for the gas in liquid we say maximum volume of gas in cc which can dissolve in one cc of liquid to form a saturated solution at that temperature the factors which affect this solubility first is nature of gas and solvent solubility depends on which gas we are taking and which solvent is there in this case we are taking some gases like hydrogen oxygen nitrogen etc these dissolve in water easily uh, carbon dioxide and ammonia they dissolve less in water carbon dioxide and ammonia they dissolve more in water while these gases oxygen and nitrogen dissolving less in water these gases they dissolve more in ethyl alcohol more in ethyl alcohol so see which gas we are taking oxygen nitrogen if you are taking it will dissolve more in ethyl alcohol but less in the water while when we take carbon dioxide ammonia they are dissolving more in the water so solubility depends on which gas we are taking and which solvent we are taking the next factor in this is effect of temperature effect of temperature in case of gas in the liquid solubility 
for gas in liquid solution decreases with increase in temperature that means in these cases when the gas dissolves in liquid the process here is actually exothermic in nature so when gas is dissolved in liquid there is evolution of heat and this side it is endothermic and according to lichetlier's principle on increasing temperature process goes towards endothermic side so it comes this side that means gas will separate out from liquid it will not form a solution easily so solubility of gases decreases with increase in temperature next factor is effect of pressure here now when we have to study effect of pressure on solubility of gases in liquid we study henry's law now what is henry's law according to this law the mass of gas dissolved in a liquid is proportional to pressure applied on the gas more is the pressure applied on the gas more is the solubility of that gas in the liquid and more accurately in place of mass we can take the mole fraction also and when we remove the sign of proportionality we get a constant that constant is kh called henry's constant this constant name is henry's constant so this is the effect of the pressure now the important thing here in this formula is the units of the kh i can write this formula as x is equal to kh into p or i can write p is equal to kh into x there's a difference in the two formulas in the units of the henry's constant if we are using this above formula kh and p are inversely proportional so unit of pressure is the atmosphere or bar so kh unit here will be per atmosphere or we can use per bar but in this case they are proportional to each other so unit of henry's constant will be atmosphere or we can take bar in this case now value of kh depends on it depends on nature of gas for every gas this kh value is different so it will be given in the numerical nature of gas it also depends on the temperature also and normally we say kh increases with increase in temperature and third is kh is more if kh value is more that means lower is the solubility of the gas in the liquid so these points we have to learn the kh depends on these things after this we have the applications of the henry's law first is in production of carbonated drinks carbonated beverages like cold drinks soda waters in these we have the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide we have to dissolve in these so more pressure we apply on the carbon dioxide more of carbon dioxide will dissolve in these liquids so the important application of henry's law is in production of carbonated beverages second is in deep sea diving in deep sea divings so divers when they go inside the sea as they go inside the pressure increases so with the depth the pressure is increasing so we know the solubility of the gas depends on the pressure so as they go down pressure is increasing with the depth so solubility of the gases in the blood will also increase and nitrogen is there and oxygen most mainly these two gases are there because the percentage of these two gases is more so nitrogen actually goes in the blood it dissolves in the blood and oxygen is used by the body it is used by body now in the blood there is more of nitrogen under the sea and as this diver starts coming towards the surface so what will happen now when he starts coming towards the surface the pressure is decreasing so solubility of this nitrogen in the blood will also decrease so this dissolved nitrogen in the blood will start coming out and when quickly this nitrogen comes out 
then person will have a problem and that problem is called bent or this is called decompression sickness and because of this when the person reaches to the surface of the sea the person can be unconscious also because of this problem immediately when this dissolved gas starts coming out from the body then the person can have this kind of a problem so what is done for this kind of a problem the oxygen cylinders that these divers they take with them in that nitrogen amount is decreased and in place of that helium is added which is inert which is not much soluble in the blood so because of this now nitrogen is less in the blood so when the person is coming on the surface since nitrogen is less in the blood the person will not have so much of problem then next application of henry's law is for the climbers now the climbers mountain climbing the people those who are doing in uh, the mountain climbing or the people those who are living at the high altitudes as we go up pressure decreases when pressure decreases that means the solubility of the gases will be less in the blood so less of oxygen these people they will get when less of oxygen people they will get at high altitudes then they will have a problem that is called anoxia that is person will not be able to think properly that problem is known as anoxia so this is about the henry's law so we have covered up the two topics today that is two kind of solutions solid in liquid and gas in liquid